yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, at some point, Paul tells us in Philippians that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We do it now for salvation and deliverance. And we're going to talk about freedom and deliverance in this morning's message. But everyone will do it eventually because of how great He is. And all you have to do is look at the first part of the book of Revelations when the Apostle John saw this Christ and he fell down as though dead because of the magnificence of who this Jesus is. Veiled in flesh to die on the cross for us to bring us deliverance and freedom in Jesus' name. So that's the... I'm carrying on the 4th of July. This is my 4th of July message. Uh, so it's given me liberty by Christ's death and most of you will... That's, I, I changed, you know, there was a man... Patrick Henry, who made the statement, give me liberty or give me death. And it was a very important thing if you look at our history and that attitude of, of, of wanting liberty. And we're going to talk a lot about in these scriptures about liberty and freedom. But it comes through Christ's death, which we're going to celebrate this morning. Of the giving of His body and blood so you and I can be free. And we're going to look at about what the context of that freedom and, and what it means. So that's just, this morning's message is give me liberty by Christ's death. And see what that liberty is and, and what it means. And just look at some scriptures and, and share that. And then uh, I, I was so blessed at the songs that Kevin had picked out because in, in some of them it talked about deliverance and freedom and, and then the last one about revival and everything that can happen. It all comes to bring us into a closer relationship with Christ to experience that liberty and freedom uh, and, and what that means and what kind of has been moving me towards this mission, uh, method, me message in the last couple of months been reading a book uh, by Peter Marshall and it's about the history of the United States and and uh, their Great Awakening in the 1700s and the Great Awakening in the 1800s and then what was leading up to uh, the unfortunately the Civil War and the spiritual things going on about doing that and, and so much about what our country what our the pilgrims and the others that came what they had envisioned for America and so many of them, what they had envisioned was not a great military nation at all, but a nation that was going to be a lighthouse to the world about sharing the message of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that has carried our nation and in, in, in that sense through different revivals. And then you had the revival on Azusa Street and that started so much of the movement in the early 1900s and then Four Square and Amy Simple person were a part of coming out of that that movement that that movement and revival to make the and, and by the way the, uh, the the concept that she had behind what she wanted to do and see God do in her ministry and in Life Bible College, which stands for Lighthouse of International Four Square Evangelism, was make us a lighthouse to share the gospel to talk about what true freedom is. And so that's what I want to share this morning. Give me liberty by Christ's death before we celebrate communion and then we go next door and fellowship and have the joy of the liberty that, that Christ has, has brought to us. So that's where we'll start this morning. Let's put that first scripture up before we pray. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed Him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples, my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And I like what Pastor David always used to say, it's the truth you know yeah. that sets you free. Yeah. 
So we're going to look at that concept of freedom and, and liberty and, and just a little bit about the Greek words. Father, as we go to your word, we just ask that you will refresh us, renew us, and yes, bring those miracles that are possible because you came, you died, you rose again, and you sent your Holy Spirit with power to minister and indwell us and to change us and to experience that liberty and freedom of what it really means. You are the one that sets us free. And you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are the truth. May we know you. May we have a special time this morning as we share the word and we celebrate communion together, the giving of your body and blood to set us free. We thank you in your name. Amen. Okay, that's that first scripture. Uh, if, you my word, if you abide in my word, and by the way, there's a whole other thing to talk about that. And if you look at John 15, it's about abiding in Him, He and us, and, and about the vine and the branches. But that's what makes it work, abiding in Him. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the word that is used there about about freedom means there are variations of that Greek word but it means to be released to be bought back to be set free from being a, a captive to being released from something from debt uh, and all those type of things so there's a lot of meaning behind that word uh, uh, about freedom and, and, and what that means let's go to the next one Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So what do we need to be set free of? Our sin nature. That's what we need to be set free from. And if you follow Paul's teaching in, in, in Romans <coughs> chapter, starting with chapter 6, 7, and 8, chapter 5 is about being justified by faith in Jesus Christ to stand just as we had never sinned and then 6, 7, and 8 are about dealing with the horribleness that is inside of us. And so much of the time, we look at the horribleness of other people and the horrible things that they do without realizing there's a sin nature inside of us that doesn't want to cooperate and live in the freedom God wants us to have. And it's called the sin nature. And it could be something as simply as having a desire to do something that's maybe not bad in itself, but it's taking time from us from doing the things God has spoken to us about as Brother Steve talked about where God has told us to do something and we get sidetracked by something because it, it, it's our fleshly nature to want, to want to do that. And so being set free from being a slave of sin starts deep inside of me. Yes, it expands and goes to other things in the world and free from horrible evil and freedom from killing babies and all that type of stuff. Yes, but it starts inside of my own heart That's right. being set free from my own selfishness. The killing of that. Yes. So that I'm free and we'll look at what we're going to be free to do here. But that's why we are, we, we become a, we are a slave of sin until Jesus sets us free. Turns us loose buys us back, breaks the chains of addiction, whatever that may be, to follow Him. And that's, that's what we'll look at. So, and by the word, the word slave there is the word, Greek word doulos, and that's the, in its ultimate thing, that was one where now you become, as in our image of what slavery was here in the United States, where there was absolutely no freedom, you were nothing but property, and, and they could do anything they wanted to you and get away with it. And that's that type of slavery. What's the horribleness behind that word? Uh, so that's why Jesus wants to set, set us free is from ourselves and our sin nature and the punishment of sin by His death. That's how it happened. Let's go to the next one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of why, by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And there's so much in this verse. The word liberty and free there, 
there again are the root of that same Greek word of what it means to be bought back and, and, and set free. Uh, and, and, and what that what that word means. And I want to share something with you that's from uh, Strong's, if you are familiar with a, a concordance that deals with the words in, in, in the Bible. But I just want to share with you uh, what this word is about being made free. And the word liberty and freedom there are, are tied in this. And this is what he says. To liberate... To acquit. And that's what it means when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior. We stand just as if we had never sinned because Jesus paid the price. We are free. We are declared innocent. Even though it may take us a lifetime to live that out. And it does. But in the word, the word in, to liberate, acquit, set free, deliver in the New Testament, the word is used exclusively for Jesus setting believers at liberty from the dominion of sin. So that's what that word means. Stand fast therefore in it. Don't give ground to the enemy or anybody else that wants to take it away. No, I stand in Christ. And when we celebrate communion, that's a statement of faith we're going to do that we stand in Christ who has made us free. And then Paul says, because it's a temptation to go back to the old nature to become entangled again with a yoke of bondage. And it's a Galatians. It's the whole thing about that. But it's turning to doing fleshly things and thinking they may be spiritual, thinking that's going to help when it's really only about Jesus and what He has done for us to set us free. So stand fast in that liberty of being bought back and set free in Jesus Christ. And don't be of determination with the help of the Holy Spirit not to let anything rob me of that. Take the peace of that and, and what that means. And let's go to the next one. Therefore there is no condemnation. This is a powerful one in Romans. Therefore there is no condemnation. That's the handing down of judgment. To those who are in Christ Jesus do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. That means we change directions. We've accepted Jesus as our Savior. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And that's that same word again. To be set free from it. So it's through that power of the Holy Spirit that we start, you know, repentance and accepting Jesus. Repentance is changing direction. I was headed towards hell. Now because of Jesus I accept Him. I'm, I'm headed towards life, eternal life, that's to be lived out now, and yes, experienced in a way we'll never, we can't even imagine, as the song says, of what that means, but it starts now by the Spirit, because He's made me free from the law of sin and death, and when Satan wants to come to us, or to somebody else, and try to bring us back into that captivity, that's when we stand together, and we stand with them, and we stand before Christ, and says, no, because Jesus has already paid the price and it's sure for eternity. It will go on forever and ever. Now, why do we need this freedom? We looked at it a little bit from what Jesus said, whoever sins is a slave of sin. Let's go to the next one. But now having been set free from sin, and by the way, that's that same Greek word again, and having become slaves of God, now that's that same word, doulos, which means to be a slave. Well, you said, now wait a minute, I wanted to be free. Yeah. But you see, if we're set free without God intervening in our lives, we're, set, we're going back into the dominion of sin and we're held captive to it. Yeah. So here's the choices we have to make, and then we'll look at kind of the benefits of it. Having been set free from sin and become slaves of God. That's the, that's the two choices. Who do you want to serve? Yourself and sinfulness and the devil and hell? Or do we want to serve a God who would give His own Son on the cross that we're going to celebrate to give us eternal life that yes, goes on forever, but starts the minute we accept Jesus as our Savior and then makes it possible for those songs that we were singing to have those miracles happen because Jesus is alive and inside of us and we're set free. 
become slaves of God because he has our best interest in view always. And the cross is the absolute proof of that. You have your fruit unto holiness in the end, everlasting life. Everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is, so do you want to be a slave of God? Yes, because He's going to give us a gift. Yes. Is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So to serve Him brings us into freedom. And by the way, that's one of the things our founding fathers knew and all of that. The way to be free is to follow the laws that are the benefit for the benefit of the governed. They didn't want to do away with all government. They wanted to have a just and righteous government. And then you have freedom to do what the government allows for the benefit of the people when we obey that law. And so that gives us the ability, and they talk about how many millions of people we're going to drive over the, over the 4th of July to have that freedom to do that. We have the freedom to do it when we obey the laws that govern how we drive and what we do. That brings us the freedom to do it. Well, imagine in a spiritual sense what it means, what God wants for us is to us to experience eternal life and to abide and have fellowship with the Son. That's what He wants for us and He gives us that through the Holy Spirit to make that happen. So to become a slave of God is to become free to receive all that God has for us and what He wants for us to have. So that's why that's, that's one of the things why we need it is because we are slaves of sin. Let's go to the, let's go to the next Scripture. For you, brother, and this is back to Galatians, you have been called to liberty, and that's that same word again, been called to freedom. Only do not use freedom as an opportunity to flesh, but through love serve one another. And what Paul was getting to, well, if, I'm, if God has forgiven me, then I can do whatever I want. Well, there's a truth to that as long as it's not following my sin nature. If it's following the Holy Spirit and what He wants for me and what the Word said. Remember what Jesus said about my Word abiding in you, knowing what the Word says and staying in it and getting in it individually and collectively and applying it then to all of that. Only well, we do not use opportunity in the flesh, but through love serve one another. And this is how the benefit works out to change our families, our culture, our marriages, our churches, and everything else is when we're going to follow God, experience eternal life, and then love one another because that's fulfilling the law. For all the laws fulfilled in, in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's the fulfillment of that that he wants us to have in that is that liberty to be able to do that. Then let's go to the next one. And this is the one we're going to finish up with before we take communion. There were a lot of other scriptures about freedom and all that thing and, and in Romans chapter 8 it's just if you haven't read it in a while read Romans chapter 8 it's just a, such a fabulous chapter of what the gospel is and how it applies to us and what it brings to us yes. even if we're like some of the people back there in the voice of the martyrs that's on the table going through horrendous circumstances just because we're following Christ and yet there's a freedom and a joy in it that they are willing to give their lives to be able to do that and experience it because they found a true freedom in Christ. So if you haven't read it in a while, read it. But anyway, there's, there's just a, a lot back, up, back there. And this is the scripture, one of the scriptures that I, I quote every morning after I get up and go through some scripture quotes. and just. But to me, it's one of the most powerful things that the Apostle Paul was ever anointed by the Holy Spirit to write. And here we go again. He has delivered us from the power of the word, power of darkness. And that word deliver is a different Greek word, but it means the same thing in a sense, to be set free from, to be delivered from it. He has delivered us and set us free from the power of darkness. Uh, 
to rescue. And it has the idea of, and when I was thinking about it, if you've seen some of the things on the news, they had one about a person who was rescued during a shark attack, how people saw what was going on and rescued that person and defeated the shark and got that person away from the shark. Or it's about lifeguards who will go out and they've had this thing too about the, the warmings and all that, how so many of the opposite currents, people on the beach, are all at once swept out in towards the sea because they got in that outflowing current and people come to rescue them. Or if you've seen people come in the floods and the other things that have happened or in the fires of Southern California, you see people coming to rescue people. That's what this, the meaning of this word, he has rescued us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. And that's what God wants for us. That's what He wants for me to get past, you know, the fears and apprehensions about, well, what about if this happens or this doesn't happen? But to realize that I have Christ right now. And that He lives inside of me and I'm guaranteed eternal life. And one of the things too about deliverance and then we'll come to the communion table after I force you to listen to an old Barry McGuire song. Uh, but one of the things about being delivered and be set free and it's a, a scripture in, in Corinthians and we won't have time to read it but it's in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians but it's about, about Paul talks about being delivered from death about how God delivered him and it was past tense. So we've been delivered from the penalty of sin by accepting Jesus as our Savior. Then he goes on to say that he shall and he, sh he will deliver now in the circumstances Paul was in. So right now, through the power of the cross and the Holy Spirit, you and I are being delivered from the power of sin in our lives on a daily basis day by day, year by year, week by week, whatever time God gives us, that's what He has given us. So it's past, it's present, and then at some point He's going to deliver us from the very presence of sin because spiritually we've been conveyed into the kingdom of His Son. But He is coming back, and at some point the earth is going to surrender and all the powers will be defeated and there will be a reigning Savior over a whole new concept of heaven and earth and that's in the future for us and Paul says it's guaranteed because you've been delivered from the power of darkness and put into the kingdom of the son of his love it's spiritual now but it will be a physical application somewhere down the road in God's timing we'll see that tremendous powerful manifestation but as we celebrate communion this morning if there's something going on, pressure or whatever it's been, or someone you know, we can pray for them. But as we do it, we make communion as a step of faith that the ball and chain of sin we've been set free from and we can live in that freedom right now knowing there's a concept of it coming that we can't even begin to comprehend. So, this is a song by Barry McGuire and Larry Jack and Roller. So let's let it play. Free. My old rock and roll, Barry McGuire, hippie movement, coming out of all of that, the Jesus movement. Set free. Set free. So I have the worship team come. We'll start preparing our hearts for communion. You know, people, you, I think just about everybody has been here. We'll, we'll serve the, the, uh, the little cracker. We'll hold it and pray together. Then we'll do the same with the cup. We'll pray together and take it and celebrate being set free. Make it a confession of faith as well as hope. The Apostle Paul told us, uh, I received the Lord which I delivered you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which betrayed took bread and we had given thanks he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, they took the cup and said, this is the new covenant. What's that covenant? The covenant of freedom from sin, death, hell, and the grave. Yes. And all of Satan's holdings and sway and all of that. The new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink it and remembers for me 
of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup. You show the Lord's death till He comes. He's coming back. So we'll take together and then we'll take it and hold it and then we'll, we'll pray together. It's just a symbol. But when you take it by faith, it brings the application of everything that this Jesus did in His body. Who is in His own flesh bore our sicknesses and our sins in His own flesh to, bring, to buy us freedom, to buy us liberty through His death. Father, as we take this symbol, I just ask that it will be a reality to us and a special time of thanksgiving and accepting what you have done for us and giving of ourselves to you because you have given us eternal life. We thank you that Jesus in his body took all of our sin and bore it on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take it together. Hold the cup, we'll pray, and take it together. This is the new covenant in my blood. It's the covenant of freedom. Give me liberty through Christ's death. Father, we just take this symbol representing the blood of Jesus that was spilled for us that cleanses us from all sin. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the life that we have because of what you have done. We take it in faith. We praise you and honor you in your name, Jesus. Let's drink together. Kevin has chose one more very special song. The old red cross. Give me liberty through Christ's death because of what he did on the cross. Yes. Let's sing it. Let's stand up, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Given by, reconciled with, and the child of the Father, saved and justified by faith, the birth, death, and resurrection of the Son, looking for his soon return, sanctified, sealed, and dwelled, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have fellow, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. I'm going to say the blessing for the food. So when the ladies are ready, they can just go ahead and start serving, but stay in fellowship and enjoy that freedom that we have in Christ. Father, we just thank you for this time of celebrating the death of Jesus Christ and living in the experience of the resurrection yes. of Jesus Christ by your power. Lord, as we fellowship next door, we just pray, Lord, it'll be a tremendous spiritual time of joy that you will bless the food to our bodies and our bodies will be yours to live through us to share you with the world. We thank you and give you praise in your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. See you next door.